Hello guys and Happy New Year. It's my first video back on YouTube since 2021 so I guess it still is appropriate to be saying Happy New Year. Today I wanted to kick off a series that I've started this year which is basically going to be a wish list series. Each month I'm going to be curating a wish list of things that I think are maybe missing from my wardrobe, trends that I like. I'm going to have a look into my wardrobe and see what I feel is missing, what I might want to add and I just feel like it's a more careful and I guess sustainable but not particularly sustainable because I'll still be purchasing things but it's a more thought out process of what I will be adding to my wardrobe throughout the year because I'll, it's a wish list that I've curated through you know having a look through my own wardrobe seeing what's popular at the moment and deciding what I think is missing or that I want to try out so hopefully this is an interesting series obviously I've now got my January wish list I've purchased a couple of things off it that I felt that I wanted to try or needed to be honest a lot of the things in this are um things I wanted so hopefully like I said hopefully it'll be interesting and um each month I will talk you through the different pieces that I've maybe bought or tried or maybe some months I won't even buy anything and then I don't know what I'll do in that instance I don't know if there'll be a video these wish lists are shoppable via my like to know it which I'll link in the description on my blog um, and you can probably see all the pieces or some of the pieces or even a piece that I've mentioned over on my Instagram which is my main creative space. <laughs> I'm gonna get on with it. I really rambled at this intro. I've tried to film it a couple of times to make it make sense because I feel like sometimes I try to explain things and they don't make sense. So hopefully this does. It's a wish list series where I then decide whether I want to buy things. I don't know. That's a terrible exp explanation. But we'll just get on with it. Let's go. <laughs> So first up, let me begin by showing you the wish list. There are quite a few pieces on there. These are just things that have caught my eye uh, when I've been scrolling through the websites, colours that I really enjoyed. And obviously there are some obvious trends in there that have been around this January. So I don't know if this is actually gonna frame the picture that I put in there. Let's hope that my editing skills can slot that. Oh my God, I'm hurting my arm. My arm doesn't bend like that. Hopefully it slots into that spot beautifully. Anyway. So that is the wish list. I had a look through and I decided on the pieces that I thought I wanted to add to my wardrobe for the new year, uh, colours I wanted to try out and trends that I might want to buy into. So let's get going and I'll show you the first piece, which is this. I had, I don't know what it was. I was so drawn to this shirt on Arquette. I just loved it. The colour, um, I love blue anyway, but normally I will opt for like a more muted blue, a baby blue to add to my wardrobe. But there's something about this colour that is around at the moment that I'm really, really drawn to. And I thought it's not, you know, it's not overly patterned. Well, it's not patterned at all, but it's not got pattern on it. It's not that sort of trend that I might buy into and then maybe never wear again. I just kept picturing myself in summer with like the little white top on and some denim shorts with this over the top. And I just was like, I clearly need it in my life. So I bought it. Absolutely love it so far. I haven't obviously worn it out because the tag's still on. But I've definitely thrown away the... Um, bag that it came in when I ordered it because I straight away I was just like no I just love it. The fit is quite loose and oversized. I do love an Arquette shirt. I just think the quality is amazing and um, they just fit really nicely. They've got that really nice masculine androgynous feel to them that I just think is really flattering on my shape and my height and pairs really well with other things in my wardrobe. I am a shirt lover through and through. And as much as I'm a beige lover, I do love a pop of colour. So this is a great colour to add in because it's not something that strays too far from my usual colour choices because I do really love blue. It's definitely a purchase that I'm happy to have made off my wish list because even though it's sort of out of the ordinary for my usual beige loving life, it's still feels like me, it still feels like a purchase that makes sense. I, I'm really excited to get to wear this more. I'm like, I'm going out over the next couple of days and it's meant to be quite cold still. I really just wanna wear it and I'm trying to figure out how to wear it and if I can, or whether I'm gonna have to put some woolly coat and just be warm. Pricing wise, does this have the price on it? I don't know. Pricing wise, it doesn't say. Do you know what's really confusing for me? I always um, purchase a European 36 because in some websites that's an 8 but from like Arcare and other stories etc it's a 10 but it still fits like an 8. I find it all very confusing but I normally just opt for 36. Apart from the next thing I want to show you because I was so desperate to buy this next thing that I just bought what was left. <laughs> so next up we have these dungarees which are from And Other Stories. I would usually, as I just said, buy these in, this is a terrible way of showing you, I would normally buy these in a 36 but I was looking at them for ages and then all of a sudden they were all out of stock 
and I actually went to Mango and I bought a pair of dungarees in the sale but when I took them home and tried them on, I even tried them on in the shop and thought oh look, they look alright but you know when you're in a changing room and the mirror is really unflattering and you're a bit like I feel like I need to see it in my own home so I bought them. The thing that drew me to these is the fitted high-waisted style of them and just the sort of flattering fit of them. I have had so many different pairs of dungarees but I've, I've just wanted a pair that feels really nice because they are one of my go-to pieces and I've not had a pair in my wardrobe for a while that I've grabbed for and I want these to be this but I've had to buy them in a size smaller than I normally would so I've had to get them in a 34 which I guess technically for and other stories sizes is an 8 I don't know it really confuses me but to be fair I think it, I think they are slightly just like this much too small for me and only sort of around the crotch area but I'm thinking with wear and stretchiness I will hopefully be able to like wear them in and stretch them out a bit but they're not uncomfortably tight if that makes sense they have a really nice fit to them I probably would have preferred a 36 but they don't seem to be coming back in stock anytime soon anyway I'm rambling about the sizing when I barely even showed you them they are really really lovely they have sort of this dark wash denim they did have them in a lighter wash but they're completely out of stock as well but then I had to get them in the darker wash which I'm quite fine with I think this is a nice colour on me and a very classic sort of dungaree look which I like. Um, I can picture myself one day moving out and wearing dungarees, moving boxes, very 90s, very du moving out vibes. That's not the only reason I bought these. Um, but I actually wear dungarees a lot. Uh, I used to have a pair from Miss Selfridge that I wore religiously, but they were a size too big. They weren't quite the flattering fit that I wanted, but I did absolutely love them because they're such a lazy sort of throw on piece that makes you feel like you've made an effort and you kind of look cute. You can do a bit of a crossover thing with the strap or you can have them like this. I quite like them, you know, the classic sort of over the shoulder style. Um, there's even belt loops here, so if you wanted to add a belt, which I'm not sure, I've never tried to add a belt to dungarees before, you could do. And if you look at the model on the website, she does look so good in them, and the way they fit her waist is what really drew me in. I just wanted some classic dungarees that I felt classic and flattering in, um, and these were it, and I just couldn't resist, even though I'd bought that pair from Mango, I was like, I, I just think I need to try this pair, even though they're slightly more expensive. Uh, they were £89, which for me is a pricey purchase. I don't know about anyone else out there, but that's a pricey purchase. But I just thought for something that I'm probably going to wear so much, and that will probably last a really long time if I can stretch the crotch out. I don't know how I'm going to do that, maybe just some lunges or something, I don't know. That they're, they're worth the money, an investment piece, as you will. And a quality piece as well, rather than a pair that maybe wouldn't last as long due to the lack of quality I don't know and again they're a good purchase that I've needed in my wardrobe uh, because they have been missing and I've missed wearing dungarees it's, it's something that I've no matter what my style has been whether I've been really colorful or really beige or really black and white I've always liked dungarees and I've always grabbed for them in my wardrobe because they kind of work with with whatever your style is um, I personally really like these with like a white t-shirt or white blouse or shirt underneath um, just very sort of clean and classic and cute. Now the next thing is kind of a random one but in another video I did talk about how I really loved claw clips. They you know the hair claws that you put in your hair. I, I use them all the time whether I'm just at home or I'm out and I've been rained on or whether I actually want to wear my hair like that. They are the only other way that I could do my hair because I really wish that I liked how I looked with a ponytail but I don't even though it's so comfy. So that is the only sort of alternative I have of putting my hair up and getting, even you just really wanna get your hair off your neck, that's the way I do it. Anyway, I saw a claw clip on Arquette when I was looking at that shirt and I think it was around 18 pound and it was really, really nice. It was sort of like a beigey black and white tortoiseshell sort of vibe and I just thought that would look really nice with some of the pieces in my wardrobe and I don't have a claw clip that looks like that but I just felt like 18 pound was a bit much for a hair clip. So I went to Etsy because I was like, there is no way I'm not gonna be able to find a really good dupe on Etsy. And, one second, I did. I got this for, oh, I can't remember. Let me go on my emails and find the price. It's from a shop called Braid and Bow Studio and it was, at the time it was on sale from £4.70 to £3.99. Ooh, I just didn't, it was £3.99. So instead of spending £18 for the same sort of tones, and whatever else, it's not focusing on the clip at all. It's like, I just want to look at you. I've got this for 3 99 and I've not stopped wearing it since it arrived, apart from this moment in time. I just, yeah, I mean, I just really like the colour colours in it. Come on, camera. I've got one job. There we go. 
I just really like the colours and the tones and the style and they, they had loads more different colours and things on there. I think Etsy's a really good place to find like this sort of thing or like marble cones and really good little like bits and bobs that you just want to feel nice. Like I have some really plain claw clips but I like it when they've sort of got something to them and they match my outfit. I actually think it pairs really well with the blue shirt. I think they're a nice combo. Um, but yeah, I'm just really happy that I didn't splurge too much on a claw clip and I got this for such a bargain and it arrived really quickly. I just love an Etsy shop like for things like this and especially like home decor and stuff. Speaking of which, look at this really cute little pot that I bought, little jug. Got it in a charity shop for a pound. Fucking bargainous. Now I want to move on to the last thing which is the one thing in this haul that I'm not particularly sure about. I've basically bought, I have bought into the trends. I've really been sucked into the trend here. Let me show you. Okay. So, I could see mini Uggs everywhere. I loved how they looked on other people. So I got a pair, um, especially when they released the antelope color, which is the color that I've got. Let me get it out and show you. That's what she said. Um, and they are really, really nice, uh, especially with this cardigan, which is quite a new purchase and I love. This color is really, really nice. I love the fact that the fur inside is like this. But the only thing is, I don't actually know whether I have anything that I could wear them with. I think you've kind of got to be wearing them with like loose baggy jeans or like tracksuit bottoms, joggers, and my style isn't that way. Do you know, does that make sense? I do have some baggier pants and stuff, but they're not what I opt for on the regular. So it made me start to question whether I would actually get a lot of wear out of these. For the price of £125, I didn't know whether it was worth keeping them. And since they've arrived, they arrived about a week ago, I tried them on once and then I've not bothered to try and style them with anything um i haven't wanted to which sounds really bad but it just made me realize maybe this isn't a purchase that i should be splurging on maybe this isn't a trend that i should be buying so fully into so as much as i love these the color is perfect i really wish i could find something else this color but i have decided to be sending these back i'll probably go to the post office today or tomorrow and send them back and hopefully get my 125 pounds back i've decided to be a cheapskate and buy a dupe because that way I feel like I can get involved in the trend if I want and it might seem like a stupid way out I don't know I feel like it's a smart decision because I'm probably not gonna I don't know I'm saving myself some money is basically what I'm trying to do I wanted to try and find a dupe and I really want to find a dupe of this color but the problem is you know this is exclusive to UGG so if you really want this color you are gonna have to pay for the UGG which if, I've, if I thought I was going to wear them and I thought I was going to get lots of wear out of them and I thought I had loads of things to style them with, I would keep these in a heartbeat. I really like them. They are a bit of a pain in the ass to get on. I don't know if anyone else has found that when they've got these Uggs, these short ones. It, they're not easy to get on your feet. Like, it took me a good minute to squish it in. Anyway, yeah, I think they are really worth it if you are the kind of person that has the, set, the sense, the dress sense that suits it. I think you have to sort of style them a certain way or else they do look very 2009 like when people used to wear like leggings and uggs not just to like go to the shops but like as as like fashion um i don't want to i don't want to look like that and i would rather look cool and chic and then like i've seen other people do but i don't think i'm going to i don't think i'm going to get that wear out of them so i found a pair on mark spencer's for 20 pound 29 pound around that mark sorry i'll stop rustling around that mark and I've ordered those instead because I just thought that way I can get involved if I want to try and style them I can but I've not completely broken my bank. Obviously I'm not going to have to probably the same quality and the same you know it won't have the little ugly label and stuff but it will it will have the same feel to it and I think that's a smarter purchase on my behalf. Uh, I don't want anything in my wardrobe that's just going to sit there and I feel like these might end up just sitting there. Uh, I'm also not sure if this length is that flattering on me. I don't know if it cuts me off at a weird place on the angle, angle, ankle. So yeah, I'm unsure about the length of them, length, height, I don't know, height. So I actually ordered the shorter version and the slightly longer version from Marks and Spencers to see, I mean, I might not even keep those. This might be a thing that I really can't work into my style and that's fair enough, but I just don't want to be wasting money on something that one, someone else could have these in their life and I've taken a size six out of stock and two, I just don't want to waste money on anything that's not going to get loved and worn because um, that is not what this series is about. This series is about making good investments and I don't think this was a smart investment for me. I think I just got hooked. 
and saw them on someone's store and was like they look so nice and then I tried them on actually I tried them on with my chucky bottoms which is probably why at first I was like yeah vibing and then I thought I don't actually wear any baggy pants I only wear like fitted trousers and jeans and I, like my jeans are quite fitted I don't know I just don't think they're the right purchase for me I really rambled about these but I wanted it to make sense the fact that I'm not keeping them as nice as they are I do think they're lovely and the quality is amazing but I'm gonna get a dupe because to be in my wardrobe I want something to be worn a lot and I don't think you will be also I'll try and link the dupe below because to be honest they look identical they don't do that color at all they've only got like the sort of sandy um chestnutty brown color which is fine because I still have pieces in my wardrobe that I'll go with I just that color was very me yeah that's a long ramble about Uggs hopefully you enjoyed hearing what I had on my January wish list and what I bought from there and the purchases that I made and maybe this will inspire you to do something similar where you sort of create a wish list of things that you maybe want and then you try some of them out and then you make a conscious decision on whether or not you want to keep them and work with them in your wardrobe. I'm due to have a good clear out of my wardrobe to be honest so maybe keep your eyes peeled on Depop and I maybe will be selling some stuff over there. Over there? I said that's so weird. Anyway that's it. That is today's today's video. As if I'm going to do like a daily video. That won't happen from me. I've lost the ability to talk. Hopefully you enjoyed this like I said and I will see you in the next video um, and let me know if you like this idea of sort of a curated wish list haul situation. Um, I thought it was a good idea but maybe it makes no sense. I don't know. I uh, <laughs> will see you in the next video. Bye!